Hello. Okay, uh, welcome. Here what I have is y equals negative log base 5 of x plus 1 minus 3. So we have a lot of different transformations here, right? So I'm going to want to write these down. That's always the first thing I like to do when I have multiple transformations. So I have my function being multiplied by a negative. So therefore, that's going to tell me to reflect the x-axis. I also have an x plus 1. So I'm adding inside the function. So that's for that's going to, uh, or inside my equation, I guess you say. So therefore, that's going to uh, shift one unit left. And then I have a minus 3. That's going to tell me to shift my graph down 3. OK? So we have a lot of different transformations. And you can do these all on your own. It kind of really depends on how you know, comfortable you feel with graphing and applying your transformations. Um, what I always like to do, again, as I, as I go back through this, is just creating our parent graph first and then applying our transformations. So we can apply our transformations in a couple different steps if we want to. And you know, why not? And then maybe I'll do the last. I'll do maybe the reflection, and then I'll do the last two at the end. All right. So you don't need to do this three times. Um, you can obviously cut some steps, but I want to break it down for you so then you'll get an idea of you know, how we're going to go about this. So the first thing I always like to graph is my parent function with no transformations. This is going to give me some points that I can use to then apply my transformations to. So I have a logarithmic equation. I really like to write that um, in exponential form. So 5 raised to the y equals x. Therefore, I can now create a table of values that I can plot my initial graph. So I'll say x equals y. And when I'm choosing my points for y, I want to choose points that are going to make x equal 1 and x equal the base of my exponent. So here, if I have 1, y has to therefore go ahead and be 0. And if x equals 5, then we know y equals 1. So therefore, I have the point 1, comma 0, which from the parent graph we should recognize as the x-intercept. And then we have the point 5, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. All right? Now, so we have a graph that looks like this. It does not touch here. All right? So we have a graph that's going to look like here, look like this. And now the next thing is, let's go and say we're going to reflect the x-axis. So what does reflecting um, the x-axis look like? Well, what that's, I don't know, x-axis. So what that means is we're going to take this graph and now reflect it over the x-axis. So instead of going over 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, instead of going over 5, up 1, now we're going to go over 5, down 1. All right, and if we reflect the point 1, 0, since that's on the axis, that's not going to change. So now my graph is going to look something like this. All right, so that's a reflection of my x-axis. But then there's two other transformations um, that need to happen. The next thing is I need to take that graph and I need to um, shift it now down three units, and I also need to shift that graph. Uh, I also need to shift that graph one unit to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these points, and I'm going to shift it one unit to the left. That's at 1, 0. So therefore, now it's going to be at 0, 0. And then if I shift it down three units, that's now going to be at 1, 2, 3. If I take the point 5, negative 1, I shift it one unit to the left. That's now going to be at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then if I shift it down, three units from negative 1, that would now be at negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that would now be at negative, one, negative 4, negative 4. And then this point is, again, shifted 1, so it would be at 0, negative 3. Perfect. All right. Then the next important thing is I need to look at this asymptote. Remember, we have an asymptote here at x equals 0. So if I shift my graph one unit to the left, I now have a new asymptote at negative 1. Because it was originally at 0, but since I'm shifting my graph one unit to the left, my asymptote is now at negative 1. So by now, by shifting this over, uh, my graph is going to look something like this. All right. And now, to determine our asymptote, we want to write in or determine our domain and range. We want to re remember that our asymptote 
is at x equals negative 1. Therefore, the domain is going to be the set of all x values that, are going to, that, are, that we can evaluate for this function. So that's going to be from all the values of negative 1 to infinity. And our range, since a logarithmic graph increases um, to infinity and decreases to negative infinity, our range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a logarithmic, equa or logarithmic equation, um, or function would be the same process with using multiple transformations. Thanks.